Let's go. We're playing the hits of Web3 and music NFTs. This is Music, music NFT, NFT Radio. radio. Today I have an extra special guest here with us, someone who's very accomplished in the music world, someone who's been working in music NFTs and Web3 for a while now and has built some amazing stuff for the community with his Token Tracks platform. So Tommy, really excited to have you here on the Music NFT Radio podcast. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your journey. Oh, mate, it's uh, it's great to to be here. Thank you so much, Dill. As you know, I've been a huge supporter of you from day one, and um, you know, I appreciate everything you do for the community. It's fantastic what you do, and the way you always champion artists, the way you've been championing the concepts, and also your innovation within your own stuff. So it's great to be here, man. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, I am Tommy okay. D. I I actually come from from music, which. Um, I think it's quite rare for tech building people in this space. It's like a lot of tech building people are tech building people. They don't have any kind of real like understanding of what it feels like to be in a van for 10 hours in a day and travel to a gig that you play in front of five people and a dog, which I have done many, many times. And I'm sure a lot of other people in this, this space tonight have done. Uh, and those that are listening in on the podcast and stuff like that, they really understand it. And I think, you know, I bring that kind of understanding as well as also the understanding of being in the studio with some incredible artists like, you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce and Kanye and Kylie Minogue and Tom Jones and and Mabel and all kinds of great, great, great artists that I've um, had the pleasure and honor of being able to work with on their music. So, you know, I try and bring everything to that experience and to this space. Awesome, Tommy. Yeah, thank you for coming on, man. Excited to get into your story. For anyone who's listening in on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and like the video. If you're on one of the podcast sites, come support us on YouTube. Tap into the live Twitter spaces we run 24-7. We like having special guests on like Tommy to tell us about what they're working on and Web3 and NFTs. So yeah, tap in with the show, Tommy. Excited to get in this a little bit more. And I always like to start with the beginning of your journey, you know, how you first got into music and got to the place you're at. Because I've been finding it's always a long road for the artist, right? And you have to go through a lot in the music business before you end up at NFTs and Web3. So I think that's a common theme with some of the builders in this space. Yeah, I mean, I, I I agree. I think uh, for me, it started out in a really simple. I mean, I've I've been making music for thirty years. I, I'm I'm a music producer. I started out as a DJ. Uh, was part of the kind of first wave of of, of uh, you know wave rave, I suppose you could call it DJs people. You know who back in the sort of late eighties and early nineties, and we would you know particularly I come from obviously as you can tell by my accent I come from the UK and we were very much part of that early kind of acid house scene and the club scene that was big in the UK I was very much part of that putting on putting on raves and DJing at them but I was also always a guitarist and a songwriter and a keyboard player and a drummer and you know multi instrumentalist and always made music as well um, and so I was always looking at ways of bringing what I'd learned from Clubland and bringing it into making a music and vice versa, you know, bringing in the kind of concepts around music production and, and how you put music together and incorporating that into my DJ sets. So, you know, for me, it was always a very much a part, music was always very much a part of my life and it was what I, it's anything I really know how to do, really. I have loads and loads of ideas and loads and loads of musical concepts. And um, and so, yeah, I just worked along the way and eventually I got into doing more and more studio work. I ended up having a big hit record and that kind of opened the door to me as a music producer and a songwriter and I've just been working, working, and working ever since. And then about, I got into crypto, I mean, I, I first became aware of crypto back in 2012, uh, but didn't really get my head. You know, I was one of those people walking around going, Bitcoin, where, where, where is this coin? You know, where is this physical coin that is Bitcoin? Could, didn't get my head around the concept that there was this digital thing, this digital asset. Because back in 2012, you know, digital assets weren't really a thing. You know, the, the, the internet was still quite early in that respect and, and, social media was still quite early and 
I, I think there wasn't, you know, it wasn't really like obvious what there was a need for. Sorry, my dog's boofing in the background here. There wasn't really an, an obvious need for like a digital asset or a dis- or what it could do. Streaming was still very early, you know, streaming. People were still listening predominantly to music on CDs and, and, and vinyl and whatever. So I got into it then, but really I got into it in 2015, 2016. It was around that time when, you know the the last the the one but last bear bear uh, um bull run when you know everybody was sitting up going wow you know you could do so much for music crypto and blockchain could do so much for music and i was looked at it and i went that was when i really got into the tech and i really understood the concepts of like you know bitcoin and decentralization and autonomy and freedom that came from having a decentralized system and then realizing how much of our lives is dominated by non-decentralized or rather centralized systems like banks and 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 governments and kind of shit like that and that was when i went right okay i really get this now this is really exciting tech but i could not see a place for it with music really and it was when nfts came along that i went ah this is the future. I understand this because an NFT being a unique digital asset, well, everything we do in music is unique. You know, everything from the beat to the drum, you know, the drums that we're using, the, the beat itself, the bass lines, the melodies, the keyboards, the lyrics, the this, the recording, the remix, the live show, the merchandise, everything is unique in a really cool way. And also what I understood was community. And which I prefer to call use the word fans, you know, artists as artists, as music artists, whatever it is you do, you're always looking to create a fan community around what you do. It's a natural thing. You go and play gigs and gigs have bunches of people in them. And those bunches of people, you know, there's always a percentage of that bunch of people that come back and want to see you afterwards and wait around to get a selfie or an autograph or whatever. They're going to buy your merch. They're going to tell all their friends about it. They're going to post up on social media about how excited they are to go and see you in concert. You know, they're going to support you and they're going to promote you. And those people I knew would be interested in getting closer to an artist. And that's why I knew that NFTs ultimately were going to succeed in this, this world in this space, in music NFTs, probably more than anywhere else because of that need to be closer to an artist that comes with having the NFT. And that's when I was like, right, I got to get my shit together and get into this. And that was probably around about, well, I really started understanding it, I think, at the beginning of 2020. And that's when I started devising the concepts around token tracks. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the time when these ideas for music NFTs started coming up. And I remember back then it was it was really barely even a concept of music NFTs, right? At that time, it was like maybe some audio NFTs and experiments had happened. But this concept of music NFTs has grown so much. And I remember when I was first getting in, it was really just NFTs. And I was trying to think about how we would apply this for music. And you've been thinking about some of the same things for a while, right? And then applying your 30 years experience in the music industry to what you can build for artists in the NFT world and with Web3. And so I think that, you know, it's been a process of development, right? Coming from the basic ideas or even like you said, from the idea of like, all right, well, what even is Bitcoin or cryptocurrency? And then coming a very long way to like now, you know, NFTs and digitally selling music on the blockchain. I mean, it's it's quite a long way, right, from getting into this space to understand the music implications and everything we can build with music NFTs. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what's so exciting about this technology is there are so many opportunities for application. And I think it's beautiful seeing people like yourself and big shout out to Fifi, who's down there in the space as well. Um, you know, and so many other great people who've come along here and using their imagination, understanding their assets. I think that's really important is to understand your assets, that what you have as a, as a music creator. You know, what is it you have? What is it you do? You write songs, you perform, you know, you play gigs, you maybe have some merch. I mean, all of, there are many different aspects of this that you can find ways to incorporate into an NFT and an NFT drop. 
An NFT is just a way of connecting to your fans. Like I said earlier on, those true people, those true fans that are going to come along and be and want to support you. Um, the added bonus and the, and the big difference, I think, uh, with an NFT uh, as opposed to maybe a Patreon or an OnlyFans concept is that the owners of those NFTs can take them and trade them. And this is where the next con obvious, to me, obvious zeitgeist of the music experience comes in. Because, you know, the concept around music listening, well, that's, that's kind of done. You know, everybody listens to music for free. Uh, you know, some people like myself pay for it, but most people I think now listen to music for free, whether it's the f whether it's on YouTube or whether it's on uh, Spotify's freemium or, you know, there's a number of different places where obviously you can listen to anything, pretty much anything you might want to listen to for free. And if you're prepared to put up with, um, you know, some adverts every now and again, well, whoopee do. Um, but we all know, I mean, you have to be under a rock to not know that the, there is serious problems with that model. And of course, the serious problems are not for the tech companies that run those models or for the master, or for the major labels that own predominantly all the catalog. The major problem is for the rest of us, artists and musicians that are maybe not signed to majors or are just trying to get along and earn a living out of making music. And that's where I believe crypto can really, really start to impact that community. A community of people who've maybe, maybe with, like yourself, were signed to a major uh, and, you know, it didn't work out for you on the major, but, you know, you still got something to offer. Or maybe you're just coming into this business for the first time, or maybe you've been an independent artist for maybe, and you're maybe on your third or fourth album, and you're looking at ways of keeping the whole thing fresh. I think that NFTs could have a real, you know, have a real, real benefit to you if you're one of those like people. You know, you've got an ability to utilize what you do, what your assets are, and incorporate them in different sort of levels of NFT drops. Very much like what you do, Dill, you know, with your different levels of VIP membership and the one of ones that you do and, and, and so forth and so forth. You know, I think there are lots of different things that you can do. Twitter Spaces is a great place to come and find out what new people are doing with new drops. And I'm constantly on Twitter Spaces hearing incredible drops and innovative drops that people are doing around this space. And it makes it's it's exciting and fun to be in it. And, you know, actually, I would argue that the current situation that we're in with the market being where it is and everything crashing. And of course, if you've not been in crypto before, you may not be aware of these kinds of crashes. Crypto is a volatile space. It's a volatile asset, which means it goes up crazy amounts and it comes down crazy amounts. And it's not, you know, it's not gold. It's not Apple or whatever, you know, it goes it goes up very crazily and it comes down very crazily. But actually, I would argue that this is a great time to get into this space because the uh, the entry level price is so much lower now. So uh, for artists, I think you know, trying to engage their community to come on board maybe six months ago when NFTs, you know, like the average price of an NFT that you're dropping maybe two three hundred bucks. Well, that same NFT is now 50, 60 bucks. Now, that's a big difference. And that means the barrier of entry is much lower. So I believe this is a great time for artists to really explore the opportunities F NFTs have to offer with their own community, with their own, you know, Web2, for want of a better word, community. So, yeah, I think it's, it's a really exciting time now. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know... Market goes up, market goes down. This is always an opportunity. If you've been in the market for a while, you understand that you want to buy the dips. So when it goes down, it's an opportunity. And then you always make a new chance for someone else to get in or, or for someone who, you know, maybe is discovering NFTs to now get in at a more reasonable price. So I do think we're going to have that wave of new people entering into the space. And with that, I'm sure new artists entering as well. And so I know what you're doing at Token Tracks, you know, one thing you're doing is trying to make the process of creating a music NFT easier for artists so that they have a structure to go with and a, and a format. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about what you're building there and, and the ways that Token Tracks can make it easier for artists who are making music NFTs. 
Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for, for that. I mean, so I came up with the concept of, of, of token tracks back in 2020. And then we started building out the company, um, you know, towards the end of that year. And it's grown really, really quickly because the basic concept is I wanted to take the best bits of the music business, which is to me is music business people, you know, major label led people or managers or artists or whatever. You know, it's a lot of really incredible people in this space that really understand artists, what artists need, what, you know, what they need for developing. And, and so I, I, took, I wanted to take the best bits of the, some of the people that I knew in the music industry that I really admired. And bring them in and say, you know, you develop the music, you find the music, you develop it, you help the artists, and we support them, we put marketing around them, we, we support them with their music, not just, you know, with the concepts of NFT. And then I also wanted to bring in the best people I could find from, like, blockchain, regulation, licensing, management, you know, marketing, and, and find a way of having these two kind of parties in one room discussing this space and and looking at the opportunities and helping to really write the the book on what this is all about where you know where we can go with this um and that's what token tracks is we're we're a team of 36 people i've got miles leonard who's the ex-ceo um and chairman of warner music you know signed coldplay and and gorillas and kylie we've got jason who's the head of Ex head of the EMI marketing team that was across, you know, like the whole gorillas time, the golden time of gorillas. And then we got amazing people like Danton Supple and Paul Etworth, you know, his Grammy and Oscar winning music producer. We've got all these really incredible people that come through music and, and a whole bunch of others as well. And so they head up the talent and kind of like, you know, the understanding of the, what the talent needs. And then again, like I said, I've got incredible people in blockchain and, and, and so forth. And we have just raised like $10 million for a, for a token raise. Uh, we are a token. A token is the tracks token. You can go and buy it on a Sendix. Uh, it, the tracks token is going to grow into an extremely powerful token. We are developing something which we're going to announce very soon. Uh, which is going to be incredibly powerful usage of this token and what the token benefits will give you. The tracks, the token tracks platform itself is a straight up NFT music platform, but with a twist because every artist that we put through the system has the full support of our music department, our talent department, our marketing department. We aren't just like many other NFT platforms, just a place where you go. You mint a song, you put it up, and it's up to you to do all the work. We help you with all of that. But that is, of course, why we don't, you know, we're a curated service. And we're a created service because we want to give not only the people who are going to mint the NFT real opportunities, but also the people that are going to buy those NFTs. We want to give them a really great guaranteed service that's trusted. You know, I think we've seen a lot of scammy rug pool projects over the last six months and it's taken a bit of the wind out the sales of the community because of people getting rugged and shit like that so i think it's really important that we have that kind of level of of, of trust in the community yeah definitely that sounds really exciting man you're working on some cool stuff you got a big team i mean that's awesome and i'm happy to have you on here talking a little bit about it I think it's super important that we find ways to onboard more artists and more collectors into the space because right now onboarding is the main conversation and it's like how do we get more people interested in music NFTs? Um, how do we bring the Web 2 audience over here to Web 3, right? But also how do we get more of the Web 3 audience interested in music? Because we have a massive Web 3 audience compared to the size of music NFTs. I mean, I, I would think music NFTs are still kind of in that like 1% range of all NFTs and NFT volume. Um, I don't have the numbers, but just from what I've seen, it, it really seems like music NFTs are tiny in the grand scheme of things. I mean, look at the volume, look at the trading. It's all so new compared to PFPs. Like, I mean, you know, PFPs and other types of art make you know, look like sophisticated market compared to music NFTs because there's just such little volume for us right now comparatively. So 
I think what you're doing is great and is going to be one of those things that helps to propel the space forward. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a really great point that you make. I think the, rea the reality is, is that when you buy something, anything in this world, there is a number of criteria which the reason why you buy it, right? Um, it might have some kind of usage to you. It might be, you know, you might need a bag because you've got a bunch of stuff that you need to carry around. Now, you've got a choice. You can ch make a choice about a bag. You can say, do I need to just carry some shit around with me or do I want to make a bit of a statement about what I'm when I'm carrying the shit around with me? You know, and if that's the case, then, yeah, maybe you go and buy an Hermes bag or a Gucci bag or something like that. Maybe you spend £2,000 on that concept. Or maybe you just get a carrier bag from your local supermarket and you put a bunch of shit in. Both, both of those objects will do the same job to you as a human being. But one has status and the other one doesn't have status. Well, it does have status, but it has a different type of status to the other one. And I think the key for us is these things are prominent in our life, right? If I walk into a restaurant, you know, with a, I don't know, a, 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 a Gucci rucksack, right? Then people are going to go, fuck, you know, wait, hey, that's a bit of a player over there. If I walk in, uh, excuse me, if I walk in with like a carrier bag, then, you know, people are going to be like, oh, Jesus, who's that guy? He's just like dragged off the street, you know? So, it depends what you do. Now, a digital asset, well, I think there are limited opportunities to use that concept in the digital space right now. Um, one sec, sorry. <coughs> so there are limited opportunities to use digital objects in, in, in real-world experiences right now. Uh, the obvious ones being PFPs uh, in, you know, in, in a particular scenario like a... a social media or any of that kind of thing so that is where that is why the value of pfps or uh, digital art itself um has much higher level of, of value at this moment than music nfts but the reality is that seven billion people on this planet engage with music on a weekly basis and that, and you can't say that about static images, and you can't say that about you know other things. So, it is only a matter of time before music becomes more valuable to us as a digital asset. And I think what we're all doing is we're building for that time. We're kind of building towards that time. Will it, you know? And will it be the metaverse? Remains to be seen. Could be the metaverse. Will it be digital assets? You know, because we are living in a much more uh, 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 um, mixed media world could be i don't know but what i think we all believe is that there will you know things will be more these digital assets will be more valuable and and the ones that we that the people that are making those digital assets now or making platforms like token tracks and companies like token tracks and people like yourself you know that are invested heavily in this space what we all believe is that we are, we will be the, you know, we'll be the OGs, man. We'll be the pioneers. And as a consequence, we will get a lot more love and attention when the masses pile in. I think, look, it's not for me to say whether it's going to happen or not. Obviously, I believe it will. Otherwise, I wouldn't be spending my days doing what I'm doing. But, the react, you know, it might not. It might not happen. You know, we're seeing a number of very heavyweight people coming in and saying, nah, it's, it's, it's going to go. I don't, I don't think Bitcoin's going to go to zero. I don't think Ethereum's going to go to zero. I think there's always going to be a community. It's just how big it gets. All we have to do is any one of us is look at our screen time, and that will tell you how much you are living in the digital space right now. Now, if you talk to any 14-year-old, I'm telling you right now, they're going to have at least – you know, they may not have double what you have, especially us lot that speak on Twitter spaces all the time. But they're going to, you know, you're going to be looking at seven, eight hours a day for most teenagers, possibly more, up to 10 hours a day that they are living in a digital world, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, whatever. They're living in that world. And that is what we see. We see adoption and comfort. They are already there. They're already comfortable in that space. So as the tech progresses and grows out, 
and things like the metaverse happen and maybe the apple glasses happen and all kinds of shit like that as this stuff goes out man it's going to be exciting definitely man so much exciting stuff coming and yeah i mean the kids and the younger generations this is just going to make sense to them so much more and so i and i always think i agree with you the the ability to just collect a digital asset from your favorite artists and be with them on their journey and you know benefit as they grow is amazing and i think more and more people are going to start to understand that and as that becomes common people will understand that it is like a flex to own a og nft from an artist you know um and and we've seen that a little bit maybe with the the pfp side stuff like that but with music it gets to play out irl you know you get a meet and greet you get a vip you get a special exclusive merch right it gets to play out irl so i think that's really cool man i'm i'm really excited about the future of all this stuff that we're building and it's great to hear an update from you and token tracks and the amazing team you're putting together over there yeah, I mean, to, we've got an incredible, we just, I mean, we launched a platform about six weeks ago, um, and we doing about roughly a drop every week, every week to two weeks at the moment, obviously it will ramp up more. We've got some, we've had some, we've got some great artists already on the most stuff sold out, but you can get Max Rad, uh, his drop, there's still availability on that. That's a, he's a beautiful artist, kind of in the frame of like a kind of James Blake, but a little bit more soulful uh side of that kind of electronica he plays loads of loads of different instruments his his job is really interesting because what we wanted to do was like he did an album of nine tracks five of which are on spotify and four of which he's put out that are not on spotify he's put out as nfts so what we were doing was he's going to hold off putting those tracks out on spotify because what he wanted to do was sell the NFTs as an exclusives. And I I mean, you know, in, in, underneath it all is like the concept that, well, you know, can he make more money in that time that these tracks are exclusive as NFTs uh, than he can out of, if he'd put them on Spotify? Of course, he's going to make more money out of them as NFTs because you do, because you make no money out of Spotify. So please go and support Max. He's got a, his music is really beautiful. If you're interested, go and check him out on Token Tracks. It's T O K E N T R A X X, tokentracks.com. But also, we just dropped today um, Rat Boy. So, Rat Boy is this amazing artist that was, um, that is a kind of like, he's like a cross between like the Beasties and Beck, but he's also got like some like more punk rock in him. He's got his own skate brand that's really big here in the UK. Um, he's just a really interesting multimedia artist. He does just as much drawings and videos as he does music. He's really multi-instrumental as well. But he's created this amazing dystopia world, as they call it. We're calling it dystopia world, where there's like four gangs involved in this dystopia world. Each one has their own emblem and their own piece of music. And these, you have to pick a gang. You can buy all four NFTs or two or three NFTs, of course you can. But you pick a gang and you are part of that gang then. And what what's going to happen is uh, really, really amazing and funky and crazy as the gang, the gang members become communities behind each gang and then what these gangs can do it, it's it's really going to be really cool i can't get too much away because obviously that would be telling but you know that's available they're super cheap right now i think uh i think Matt, i think uh rat boys nfts are like 66 uh 66 matic which is like you know what's that that's like 40 bucks 50 bucks or something like that so into the in the market as it is at the moment so they're great they're really worth getting hold of because they're going to open up a lot of doors and obviously everybody that owns anything from token tracks goes into the token tracks community there's going to be some crazy things down the line around our community and what we're going to do for music creatives and the, the, the you know inner city kids and all kinds of shit that we're planning on doing um, but it's a great community and I'm so proud of my team and what we're building over there. We're just going to get our heads down this market. Like you said, you know, if you know about crypto, you know how this shit works. And 
it's going to be like this for a while, but that's a great time to buy Ethereum. It's a great time to buy NFTs. It's a great time to build communities. It's, if you're an artist, it's a great time to get your fans into this space. And uh, we're just going to keep building and keep pushing on because we still all believe in where this is going. So, yeah, thanks so much, Dil. It's been a great pleasure having being on your show and uh, listening to the music. And thanks, everyone, for listening out. Awesome. Thank you, Tommy. Thanks for coming on the Music NFT Radio podcast. Thanks for listening, everyone. Make sure to retweet the room. Music NFT Radio. Let's go, everyone. Tommy, thank you so much. If you're on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Get our official podcast. Go to musicnftradio.com to find all our playlists, podcasts, and tune in live anytime, 24-7, 365.